Hi everybody. So as I stated back a few videos ago, I really want to get into more of the digital art and the painting side of things when I do YouTube videos. And I know that I got sidetracked, I got other things happening in my life right now, and so I haven't really done that. So I thought I might take this opportunity to show you some techniques you can use using digital art to affect your images and your portraits. So for this one, what I'm going to do, because I don't like her, her outfit, I'm going to paint the dress in. And hopefully this will be something that you can use in your workflow as well. So I'm just in Adobe Camera Raw right now and um, I'm gonna make sure, click on my preferences, I wanna make sure that this opens up as a smart object and that I'm working in 16-bit depth as well as having an Adobe RGB 1998 color space. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just pull up the shadows because I wanna make everything really creamy and I'm only looking at the environment right now, I'm not looking at our subject. Pull down the contrast a bit and I'm going to pull down the exposure because I want the backdrop to show in this image. Reduce the clarity, pull up the blacks. Again, I'm looking for that creamy buttery look, which does require you to really increase the light in the shadows and the darks. Pull down the highlights a little bit, pull down the contrast again a little bit. And then I can come into curves and I can just reduce those mid-tones a little bit as well. Open the object. Because it is being opened up as a smart object in Photoshop, I am now able to right-click on that layer and choose new smart object via copy to make a brand new image layer. So it's not a duplication of the one below. If I double click this little icon, it brings me back into Adobe Camera Raw. And then what you can do is you can come down here and just reset everything so that it's back to where it was. Because I don't really want her to be affected that much. I do want a little bit of clarity on her and maybe a little bit of the shadows. Pull down the highlights a little bit. Probably right about there is good. Go into my curve and just reduce the light a little bit on her. Okay, click OK. So now we have two separate images. We have this one and we have this one. And all I wanna do is I want this layer to show through in the areas on this one. So I'm gonna hold my Option or Alt key and click on my mask. And now all I have to do is paint with a white brush onto our subject and I can get all of that lovely detail back. Just be really careful when you get closer to the edges, you don't want white haloing around your subject. So you use a smaller brush so that the softness of the spray doesn't go beyond your subject. And I'm just painting this onto her skin. like so. Okay, so now all I have to do is come to my properties of my mask, feather it out so there's no hard lines. I can go ahead and flatten this image to begin. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just duplicate my layer and go into my liquify filter and I'm going to adjust the shapes as much as I can before I begin painting. And it's really important to use a brush the proper size to affect the area that you want to. So I'm going to just floof out her hair a little bit, which is always fun. Like this. And I'm going to be painting all of this fabric back, so normally I would look at coming in and really affecting it with my Liquify filter, but this time I'm going to just physically paint it. But I'm going to reduce the size of her jaw a little bit here. Just 
just a little bit so it's not so prominent. Okay, I think that's plenty. So that's just the before and the after. So you can see how we've just kind of balanced things out. And I'm gonna go ahead and flatten this again. And for digital painting, there's not a lot of difficulty to it. You can use just a simple white soft brush. I'm at a flow of 53%. And I usually start with just a blank layer and I sample the color I want to use. So in this dress, you can see that it's more of a bluish purple and that's okay. Um, and also, if you zoom in, you can see that there's some texture on the dress here, which is going to be very difficult to replicate. So instead of attempting to do that, I'll probably just get rid of all of the texture. It's probably going to be a little bit easier. So, you know, when you're looking at this, you go, okay, where do I start? Well, pretty much I tend to typically start with distractions. So for me, I can see that right now this is distracting me, so I'm just going to paint it away. And I'm using the color that already exists in the image from her arm. And I know that her arm is not this thick around the fabric, but I'm just going to do it as a starting point. So just keep sampling the color that you want to use and eventually it'll blend. So because this is going to be more of um, a painting as opposed to a photograph, don't worry about getting rid of skin textures and stuff like that. Don't worry about that right now. That's a pin, so I'm just going to paint that away. And then because this would be this we're going to come in and we're just going to create what would be a space between the fabric and her arm and this is great because it'll give the illusion of space and don't be afraid of um, trying different shapes and techniques for this because essentially you need to make it look like that arm is shaped correctly for the pose and you can see here that that doesn't look very authentic so you can just sample come back in until it looks like it actually is her arm. So I would say that's better. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit, sample that color again, and just make sure that it's pretty detailed. You want a relatively crisp line just because you don't want it to look fake. And if it's crisper like that, then it tends to look more real. So by zooming out, it's much easier to see exactly what you've got going on. Okay, so this is before. And that's after so and all we did was use a basic soft brush I'm just going to blur it a little bit and we were able to make this look like this okay I'm gonna go ahead and flatten it because I'm gonna save this as I go so I did shoot this outside with a flash and the flash was camera left here and it was just an 8200 with a mag sphere on it okay New blank layer, make sure you're on your brush again. 
So we're gonna do the same thing that we did over here. This time we're going to paint the waist on this side. So I'm setting it up so that I can have more of a thin waist and less fabric. And after you do this, you can also go back and use liquefied to shape it. And then I will show you the easiest way to fix this. So instead of painting all of that in, now what you can do is duplicate your layer and come back into your liquify tool and this is easy because our background is actually just a color as opposed to a texture so now you can come in and you can actually work with it a little bit easier as far as creating a shape for the for the waist Okay, so that looks a little bit better. It still needs work, but it's a good start. Okay, new blank layer. Now what we're gonna do is start just painting it in. And we could leave this portion, but I think I'm just gonna go ahead and start painting. Again, all you do is sample. Just sample, sample. So if I start painting away this texture, then I don't have to worry about it affecting the rest of it. When you're doing this, just be really careful to make sure that you sample all the colors in the area that you're trying to affect. If you want to maintain consistency, shadow, lights, all of that stuff, you just need to make sure that you're still working with the same colors that already exist in the image, in the fabric, if you want to kind of maintain that realization. So the key to all things digital as far as painting and creating strictly straight out of your, your own imagination as opposed to photographic is just to just keep an open mind and concentrate on really making sure that your shadows and your highlights are realistic looking. I just do really think that, you know, there doesn't have to be such a, a black and white line between art. So, you know, whether you're using images like I do to create portraits or stories or any type of artwork, or if you're, you know, going to be a traditional artist and you're going to draw your own subject and then come in and paint it in, all of the theory and all of the, the things that you have to think about are pretty consistent and stay the same. So if you can master this and you enjoy it, 
and you do it, then that's just another tool in your arsenal. Don't ever let anyone tell you that what you're doing is wrong or it doesn't make sense or any of that because it's completely up to you what you want to do. So I'm sampling this because it's a shadow color and I want a little bit more shadow down here on this part of the fabric. It always helps to back up and take a look at your image from a distance as opposed to too close up because you will miss things if you do it that way. Just had to fix up her arm and also got to fix this up a little bit. So the more room we have in here and on this side, the more we can come in and squeeze in her waist if we need to. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and flatten all of this and duplicate my layer and come back into liquify. So now this should be way easier to affect. As far as getting a smaller looking waist. And then we're just going to come in and add a mask and just using a black brush we're just going to make sure that any kind of distortion that we created by making that with liquify we can undo here just in case turn it on and off just to see exactly if there's anything else I need to do and that's fine flatten okay so this is starting to look a little bit more realistic um, now we're just gonna work on refining it I think so all of our colors are there there's this much lighter color that's kind of in here so we're going to use this to create lighter highlights in the fabric, which as you can see exist in the original texture of this fabric. So don't be afraid to experiment and play. I think you might really surprise yourself with what you're capable of doing if you give it a chance. For these ones, you might want to zoom in a little bit closer 
sample this color and I know that it's a different shade but by adding a little bit of that color that is existing in that fabric it's gonna just give it actually a little bit of cohesiveness Using your blur tool, you can come in and just fade all of those out a little bit and then reduce your opacity and then do it again. I need a little bit of dark over here. I'm finding with Photoshop, after all these updates, it's very difficult to see your brush when it's small now. It's like it disappears. Okay, so we're just trying to kind of build on that texture and we'll add more to it after. blur some of this again go ahead and flatten this just step back take a look see what we need I think I'm gonna do another liquify I'm just going to Kind of play with this a little bit in here. Just so it looks a little more smooth. So now that shape is a bit better. going to save this. New blank layer. Back to my little brush. This time I'm just going to paint the shadow off of the dress right here. And I know some of you are probably saying, oh, couldn't you do that with the mixer brush? Oh yeah, you totally could. Sometimes just a plain soft brush is just as easy though. So do you see how now I'm coming in and I've sampled this one kind of blue color and I'm just coming in and adding touches of it everywhere? It's because there's so many different colors and images and you're probably not aware of it so much until you start doing this when you're doing this by way of sampling colors all the time you can really come in and create some interesting looks and I think this is probably okay for a start go ahead and flatten but do you see the gist of what you can do? Like there's just so much you can do. Take for instance, cropping. Let's clear this crop, but let's, we don't need all of this up here, but what I do need is I need a little bit more down here if I wanna do a little extend to the canvas. So what I'll do is I'll duplicate this layer now, but I'm going to choose an area that if I stretch it, it's not going to look too obvious. Hit Command T, pull that down. And I know that it's not going to look like she's 
as tall as that. Like it will look a little bit odd per se. But I personally love the look, so I'm gonna leave it. So I'm gonna go ahead and flatten this and add a blank layer. And now we're gonna look at affecting the rest of this. So I'm just gonna get rid of the hem at the bottom of this fabric. I'm sampling the darker color here because that's gonna be in shadow. Like this. And I'm gonna actually extend the fabric from this side of the dress down. because it's gonna just add interest. And why not? Why shouldn't we do that? So obviously so much easier to do when the fabric does not have texture, um, but there are ways that you can, you can get rid of texture or you can add texture as well if you want to, I'll show you. I just glean like little fabric textures from Google and then add them as an overlay. You can do it using clipping masks, which makes it even easier. in mind that it's all about sampling the colors so that you have a realistic looking version of what your fabric should look like. So adding shadows, adding highlights, being aware of where it's going to be more in shadow and where it would be lighter. Because really all of this is all about light. Photography is about light, painting, drawing, Everything is about light. And if you can get those things to look realistic, then you won. It's all about shadow and light. Do you see how there's grass over top of the fabric here? Well, we'll make our own grass. You see how I'm just kind of playing and making folds? Because <clears throat> where you put shadows, it'll look like the fabric is folded there. Now do you see how much cooler that looks, right? I'd say that looks way cooler. But what we need to do is we need to add a mask. We're gonna come in with um, this little grass brush that I have here and bump up our flow because what we want to do is create grass just like is along here. Right? So something like that. So now it looks a little bit more realistic. I got one there, so I'm just gonna undo that with a regular soft brush. There. So that looks pretty good. And now I'm going to show you some dodging and burning and just finishing the image off. I haven't done any retouching on her at all, but I do want to just make this fabric and stuff look a little bit more realistic. So I'm going to use my dodge and burn just curves adjustments for this. 
And now I'm going to, I have my flow at 10%. I'm just gonna come in and add a little bit of highlights on the, the fabric where the fabric would be folded. And also here. Those little tiny brush problems again. So do you see how along here, so along here, you can see it right there. Um, those are the highlights in the fabric. So that's all I'm doing now is I'm coming in and I'm just accentuating them to have that protruding looking texture. So the smaller your brush, the more specular the highlights will be and the more realistic it looks. So I'm not going to go into retouching in this video. I've got lots of other ones out there that you can go watch if you're interested in learning how to retouch skin and all that fun stuff. This one I really just wanted to show you how you can come in and by using a simple soft brush you can paint in fabric and all that stuff. If you're like me and you're anal about how people look and fabric looks and all that stuff. So I always like to give the impression of a button. I just find if you can kind of see a little bit of a belly button through fabric, I just think it's super cute. So I always like to kind of create one if I can. It gives the illusion of almost implied kind of nude-ish. I'm just going to reduce my flow down to one and paint, gently paint off a little bit of it so that it looks like it's just barely there.
Okay, so let's turn off the entire group and just see what shadows and highlights do. So now it gives it dimension, it gives it, it gives it a texture and a scope for which you can feel it and believe that it actually is fabric. Take your time with this part of the creative process. It does take time to really understand shadows and light when you're painting it and creating it yourself from nothing like this. But just look at the light and look at the way it falls on the fabric and where perhaps a shadow would be in relation to a highlight. Okay, let's look at this. Before and after. I think that looks great. I'm going to go ahead and just finish the edit on this and I'll show you what it looks like after I am finished. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for others. See you next time.